every martial artist in the world would want to be able to move their body unconsciously. Every punch, every kick, every elbow, anything that is thrown, each individual body part would think on its own. Now, every single martial artist would strive for this, work for this, hunt for this, but some just will never, maybe even all of them, will never get to that point, will never be that person. This technique is known as Ultra Instinct. Ultra Instinct would allow someone's instinct itself, every body part having its own brain, its own mind, movements would be fluid, and everything around them would seem as if, well, everyone and everything would seem as if it's just a fallback. They are all just side characters to this person's story. Yes, that may sound egotistical, but at the same time, Ultra Instinct itself is a peaceful, very calm, and a technique that would allow the user to move on his own, move without even a single thought. Yoichi Isagi would have just that. Through yo his younger years, he would begin martial arts, learning and meditating and trying to learn this so-called thing Ultra Instinct. But what he realized is, those who are using martial arts as a way of hunting down Ultra Instinct, hunting down the way of movement, didn't truly love the art of martial arts. And that would be included in Isagi himself. But there's one thing he did truly love, and one thing that he was obsessed with. Football. Or, in America, soccer. Izagi would be obsessed with football, would be a freak about football. He would believe that maybe this was his calling. Maybe that is how he would unlock his ultra instinct. Izagi would keep it simple. He would begin working with the, with the football itself, chasing it, following it, but eventually, during one of his matches and younger years, being that of a 12 or 13 year old, he would eventually feel something. The ball. The ball as if it was calling to him. But at the same time, he would begin to move. He would, he would then maneuver around every single person without even a second thought. He had no direction. His head wasn't even on a swivel. It was as if his body was moving on its own. The love for soccer was taking over and he was beginning to move. It's as if he's truly tapped in to an otherworldly power. But at the same time, he knew what this was. It was instinctual. It was ultra instinct. He would kick the ball through the net and everybody would be shocked. How did he end up there? It's as if his body told him exactly where the ball was going to land, and he maneuvered around every single defender in a matter of seconds, as if every defender that stepped in front of him, he knew exactly where their feet were, were going to be, exactly where his, his feet needed to be. How did he do that? Izuki would watch as they won that, that game, that one game, and he would realize that he truly could be, well, the only user of Ultra Instinct. He could truly use his instincts in football to his advantage. But at the same time, there's something in martial arts that reminded him. Some one thing that reminded him of all of this. That one who has Ultra Instinct or one who can move their body without thinking must stay calm, must stay patient, and must have an even, a very, very even emotional state. Because once it fluctuates, the one with Ultra Instinct may fade. He continues to think about this, and even though he's at the top of his class, is better, maybe even stronger, than everybody around him, he stays humble, modest, and he tells them all that everybody plays a role. Everybody has a role. So when he's older, 
and his team is trailing by one score, the striker, Yoichi Isagi, would be heeding the words of his coach about the soccer team he plays on. He's dashing down the field, and every defender that comes in front of him, if, the, if their legs are too far apart, would get nutmegged, too close together, would get their ankles broken. Izaki would easily chop by, nutmeg, and just blitz by everybody that's in front of him in a matter of, well, just seconds going down the field. Izaki would have one, one thing in mind and one thing in mind only. How do we get the ball in the net? And he knew that his body alone would show him the pathway, would show him without him truly even thinking. He would, he would dip and dodge and eventually it would be him and the goalie. He would look to his right to see that there was one person, his teammate, a free goal. In his mind, he would think, well, maybe the pass is there. But just as he thinks about this, his feet would move on their own, faking the pass and tapping the ball right over the goalie's head. It's a goal. The, the, the score now is one to one. Isagi would back up and his teammate would be happy, but would be confused why Izaki didn't pass the ball. Izaki would apologize, saying that he'll make sure to get him the ball the next time that it seems fit. But he believed that this, this was the best choice. Again, he's sorry about that. Of course, his teammate wouldn't even complain. He would say that he understands. I mean, he, he trusts Izaki. I mean, it was his call. Of course, this would lead to the other team taking the ball back once again. But Izaki, through his entirety and entire wisdom of soccer, and on top of that, his instincts would kick in. Kick in so much so that he would go head-to-head -head with their number one player, Kira. Kira would try to blitz past Izaki, even thinking, maybe I should pass. Maybe I should take him one-on-one. -on -one. But quickly, he could see that Izaki didn't have to wait and think. Izaki would just do. Popping the ball up right toward the head of Kira, Kira would try to react and hit it, hit it, headering it forward, but before he could even do that, well, Izaki was already in front of the ball. The header would then hit the back of Izaki, but he wouldn't say much about it. He would kick the ball away, immediately passing it to the same teammate that was complaining or at least regarded the fact that he didn't pass in the first place. But that same person would end up passing back to Izaki or Izaki and immediately he would score once again. Kira would be shocked. How did he? He knew that there was enough space between my head and the ball that he could section me off? How did he know everything that was going to happen before it happened? Kira would stand there in complete awe. Who is this guy? How did he do that? The time would then sound, and the team, leaded by Yoichi Izaki, would be the winners. Everyone would celebrate, Izaki included, and he would go over to Kira, shaking his hand, saying that it was a pleasure playing against him, and that he apologizes that their road has to end like this. Kira would look at him and smile, saying that he was just the better player, far, far better player. He's never met someone as, well, talented as, he, as Izaki. And Izaki would tell him that it's just his love for soccer, his want to get better. And all of this, just once you realize how much you truly love this game, once you truly realize how much you love football, well, instincts will carry you a long way. Kira would listen to this and nod. Interesting. And you seem so humble, very humble. Izaki would nod and smile, saying that his former senseis in martial arts always told him to stay calm and ready. Wait, if you're listening to this, you probably like my what ifs. Well, at least hopefully. So if you want to watch it on a different platform, what we know as Spotify, then make sure to check the link in the description below. And sorry for the brief intermission. Let's get back into the what if. Kira would be in complete awe about what Isagi is actually saying. He's into martial arts? 
how, how much does he know? Does he enjoy it? Is that why he's so good at soccer or football? And of course, this is a little different of an answer. Izuki isn't good at football because of martial arts alone. He actually doesn't even really like martial arts that much. It's just the principles. The principles of martial arts have taught him a lot. Kira is really interested in hearing more, but Izuki says that he has to go celebrate with his teammates. He apologizes. Maybe one day they'll talk, uh, well, a little bit more about what, what this whole instinctual side of football truly is. He runs off and celebrates with his teammates. They all have a good time, do a little bit of celebrating and so on and so forth. And eventually Izuki would arrive back at home. When he would arrive back at home, his parents would greet him and show him a letter. A letter from Blue Lock. He looks and he sees that it's actually an invitation. Not really understanding what this whole Blue Lock thing really is. And he decides, well, why not? It seems like it'll be a cool little maybe striker camp. Maybe it'll make him even better. He's really interested in getting better, so why not? So he does just that. He would visit this so-called place, uh, an auditorium of some sorts, and he would actually see Kira. He would speak with Kira for a little bit, but eventually they would all, or both of them, would head inside. When they would head inside, they would see this huge auditorium full of, well, football players. But it seems that they're all strikers. Interesting. Isagi would walk in with a smile and Kira would continue just talking to him pretty casually and eventually The person that is leading the forefront of all of this would show his face Jimpachi Ego He would show that this facility is called Blue Lock and Jimpachi Ego begins to explain everything to them that everyone will be put through a survival boot camp in order to develop their skills as the ultimate striker. And the goal is to find someone to lead Japan's national football team. And the winner would be the starting striker of that team. Everybody's insanely shocked by this, but kind of excited. Well, that's until they realize that everyone else who fails will be banned from playing on the national team ever and everyone is shocked to hear this what what are they even talking about but ego would shut them all up continuing to talk and saying that all of the best strikers out there well have some sort of one thing in common they have an ego they are egoists and they're confused by this isagi continues to listen ego huh kind of like his name egotistical he continues to listen more as Ego would explain exactly what he means, saying that real strikers want to score, want to put them, themselves in a position to score. They don't worry about the team as much. They want to show everybody that they are the best. Kira would step up and say that this is not soccer or this is not the sport that he loves. This isn't. This is something else. This is fake. And... Of course, Jimpachi Ego would say that if he doesn't believe this is the rightful soccer, he could just lock off. He's not a true striker anyways, it's obvious. A true striker has an ego. And Isagi would look at him. An ego, huh? Isagi himself believes he doesn't have an ego. Or at least, he doesn't believe he's egotistical at all. He continues to listen, listen to this man talk and... Ego would continue to say that if they really want to be the best strikers in the world, the best striker in the world, will then walk through this door. Isagi takes a step back for a second and thinks he wants to be the best striker in the world, but he doesn't want to be, well, egotistical. I mean, that goes against everything that he's set himself up with. That goes against everything in his own mind. Of course, Isagi would stand there for a second, but he would see many, many people begin to run. Hmm. He would look toward Kira, and he would he would nod his head. He would begin to walk, and Kira would be confused. Uh, Izuki, wh what are you what are you doing? Why are you going over there? Izuki would look at him, and he would say that, well, he doesn't know about this whole ego thing, but he does want to be the best striker in the world. 
He goes through those open doors, and eventually, after getting all ready and set up, getting on the clothing that is designated to them, he would arrive in a room. In a room full of other people as well. Twelve in total. He would look around, and he would see that everybody has numbers on their arms. He looks at his own, and sees that his number is somewhere in the middle of all of theirs. Hmm, I guess there's some really good people here. He looks around, and he begins to kind of scan the area. Guy with orange hair looks like he's a pretty good striker. Maybe the one sleeping? I mean, normally ones that are very calm, cool, and collected. Well, they're pretty good. He continues to look around, and eventually would see Kira. Oh, you're in here too. Well, it's nice to see you. Isagi would continue just looking around and talking to others, and everybody would realize how nice Izuki is. I mean... This is insane. They've never met someone this genuinely nice. It's actually kind of wild. Izuki would just continue getting to know everybody, introducing himself to every single person there, but eventually it would lead to a giant screen showing up in front of all of them. And the explanation would ensue that there's going to be a game of tag. Yes, a tag. And the way it works is that there will be a soccer ball or a football and they will kick it at each other. Whoever gets hit is it. They will have precisely 2 minutes and 16 seconds. Well, good luck. The ball would drop out of the sky and everybody would stand there in shock. Hmm, interesting. Izuki would walk up toward the ball and begin kicking it around. You know, the idea of tag with a soccer ball is pretty, pretty interesting. I mean, I've never done it myself. I mean, I wouldn't want to kick something at someone else. But I mean, if that's the challenge, I think we should all try our best. Izuki would then kick the ball and it would go hurling at the boy with the orange hair. It would land right on his chest and he would have to gather it. He gathers it and realizes that the ball slowed down, like considerably. It looked like it was on fire practically the way Izuki kicked it, but it seems like it slowed down and softly made connection. What kind of touch does this guy have with the ball? Nonetheless, Kunigami doesn't think much about it and rifles the ball to someone else. It's actually, well, the monk boy. He gets hit right in the face and it goes barreling off. Of course, Izuki would, would kind of flinch at this. Ugh, that looked like it hurt, man. That looked like it hurt real bad. After the ball would begin to roll, Iragashi would begin to run over to it. But just as he does, the boy that was sleeping on the ground seems to be waking up. He taps the ball and begins to kick it up as well. Hmm, this looks like fun. He kicks the ball toward Izuki and Izuki would easily dodge it. But then immediately would grab the ball once again and kick it back toward him playing a bit of a back and forth with the one by the name of Meguru Bachira. Bachira would tell Izuki that he's fun to play with, they should play some more, as they continue to kick back and forth, but Izuki would say that someone is eventually going to have to get out. He knows that, right? Bachira says that he knows, he kicks it back to the monk boy, as the monk boy would instinctually just gather it. <laughs> he's kind of confused, wait, why did I do that? that what am I doing? He kicks the ball away and tries to actually hit someone else, but Bachira would intercept it and he would smirk. Now this is fun. He kicks the ball so hard it goes barreling back toward the monk boy, but the monk boy would duck as Kira is right there, getting pegged right in the face. Super hard. Isagi kind of flinches at this as well and goes, ooh, that looked like it hurt. Kira, you might want to hurry up because, oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Isagi would look up to see that the clock says zero, zero, and zero. The thing is over. Tag is over. The, the game is over. Kira begins to freak out. No, no, that means, no, it wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. Why, why did he? He begins to completely and utterly freak out. No way, this can't be happening. He begins to scream, saying that all of this is BS, he's not the worst out of all of them. There's no way that there's 11 other people better than him. Isagi is taken back by this. Wow, maybe you should be in here. 
I can see that you definitely have an ego. Isagi would say this and Kira would stare at him with a death glare. And, well, let's just say Kira is not too happy about this. He hears Ego speaking, but all he can see is Izuki's face. He charges toward Izuki, and, well, as he throws a kick at his face, he just dodges it, moving out of the way. Baichiro watches as Izuki moves so fluidly. It's so beautiful, majestic, as if it's some sort of ballerina. It's actually kind of awesome. Baichiro even says and asks how he moves in such a way. And Izuki says that in... Well, laying man's terms, he can move all his body parts, well, without even thinking. Bachira is in insanely shocked by this, but everyone else who's there is, is as well. Ego would eventually interrupt and tell Kira that it's time for him to lock off. That his ideals were obviously going to drag him down, and it's pretty apparent that he just wasn't up for this. Not even close. Izuki would be disappointed. He would, he really would be. Frankly, he was hoping Kira didn't have an ego. Maybe he could learn Ultra Instinct. Maybe he could be instinctual like him. But he guesses not. It's sad. And everybody begins to kind of think about this idea of having this massive ego. Because frankly, most of them don't really have it. And they look at Isagi that guy, he definitely doesn't have one. I mean, look how nice he is all the time. He look how disappointed he is in Kira for the way he's acting. I mean, that guy has the furthest thing from an ego. There's no way. He, and it's obvious that he has an understanding of a game of the game far greater than most people would even realize. So he doesn't under, They don't understand. Does really not having an ego make you not the best striker in the world? Or would restrict you from not being the best striker in the world? Well, they're not so sure. They don't even want to ask any questions. I mean, this ego guy is kind of intimidating. Eventually, Kira would leave though. And they would be left with only 11 people. Ego would begin to explain what's going to happen next. This is exactly what's going to happen. There's, they're making a team. A team full of strikers. This team that they're currently with right now is Team Z. There are many other teams, at least this is according to Ego, and he explains that they'll work together, they'll live with each other, they'll work against each other, and other times they'll even betray each other. But this is the game and the game they'll be playing. So he wants to see what one of them or who is going to be the best striker in Japan. The screen would turn off and they would all realize that it seems as if they will be taking on other teams on top of that very soon. All Isagi can think about is getting back to training, getting back to work. He feels that he can only get better and if this place is made for him to be the best striker, he'll see that very soon. He begins to work and train just early on and early off and ego is just ringing in isagi's head why do they need to have egos why do they need to be egoists he doesn't understand he doesn't get it but that's something that's been drilled into his own head something that would make him not understand but at the same time he knows what's in front of them and what's a and what's going to be ahead he learns that they're going to be taking on another team. This team being that of Team X. They have no idea who they are, no idea who they'll consist of, and no idea what's to really even come. Isagi does talk to everybody else, but there's not much that gets, gets on. Nothing really happens. He tries to speak with them about what the plan is, what they should be getting ready for, and what they should do. But many of them don't really say much, and... If they say anything, they ask why he would even be the leader and why they should even be listening to him. But with that said, they would stumble on to their very first game. And let's just say the very first game is going to have massive growing pains. Isagi would step on onto the field and their quote unquote plan, which is not much of one, would be that they would all just go out there and be strikers. 
in which Isagi believes that this is a horrible idea. I mean, this is just not going to work at all. And he would be correct. He would believe that this whole idea of them just being strikers and stealing the ball away from each other is just going to go wrong really fast. He watches us how or he watches his entire team stumble, steal from each other. The other team does the same thing. They're all fighting until a freak of nature comes out of nowhere stealing the ball. Bado. Bado would come charging forward and Izaki or Izaki would be ready, waiting. Izaki would stand there waiting for Bado as he knows exactly what Bado is going to do. He reads Bado like a book, his body reacting on his own, and he immediately would steal it from him. Bado would be shocked. How the hell? What kind of... What? How did he do that? Izuki would begin sprinting off with the ball, and he would immediately go through this pile of bodies. Everybody trying to steal from each other, everybody trying to more or less take the ball away. But then, at the end of that huge pile, the ball would roll out. And there would be one person leaping over the top. Izuki. He would go charging forward with a smile on his face as Bachira watches him. Thinking that maybe, just maybe, he does have the monster within him. But the way he's acting, it's so much different than he, anybody he's ever seen. And he definitely is the furthest thing from someone who has an ego. He would get by everyone, defenders alike, especially because the defense that was set up was horrendous. I mean, nothing even good was going on there. He would kick the ball and he would score the goal. I mean, it wouldn't be complicated for him. He would get through the defense with real ease, especially because there's no, no defense really in sight. And his team, Team Z, would be up 1-0. to zero. But he knows that Baro is going to become an issue he tells his team to stop being whatever they're doing he doesn't want to get frustrated with them but at the same time he feels that's the only way they're even going to listen he does chirp up his voice a little bit not being mean or anything still being the nice selfie he always is but he tells all of them they need to take this seriously that he's, he then says that he's going to make sure the big guy doesn't get any goals. But everyone else be ready for outlet passes. Be ready and waiting immediately. But don't be stupid. Keep in mind that not everybody can outlet. Not everybody can go for, for a goal. Everyone begins arguing once again. And Isagi doesn't even know what to say. What, what, what is even happening? Why are they doing this? Well, this is supposed to be a team. Wait. Isagi would then think, a team. Maybe this is what he meant. Sometimes you need to realize that you're more than your team. He shakes his head and he can't even fathom that idea. I mean, all his life he's helped others. All his life he's kept his emotions in check, allowing his body to move on its own. But at the same time, he remembers the goal he scored not too long ago. He faked that pass. He didn't pass it to his teammates. He scored it. He thinks that of course he can he can he can score on his own, but is this this won't be that simple, not especially not right now. That thought would leave his mind as Bado is charging forward like a bull. The king would tell them to all move or they're going to lose their heads. Bado would come charging in toward Izuki and he would believe that all he needs to do is get by him and the rest is simple and easy. But as he tries, it's as if Izuki is moving out of the way, but at the same time moving in front of him. It's so confusing, it's as if his eyes are deceiving him, but just as he thinks that he's clear, the ball would get tapped one way, he'd lose control, and who would have the ball? Izuki once again. Izuki would look up and he would look for someone on the outlet and all he would see is, well, an orange haired boy or, well, basically man. Orange haired sprinting down the sideline, not too fast, but with power in his legs. One chip and the ball lands softly in front of Kunigami and one kick 
It's a goal. Everyone is completely in shock. And Kunigami smirks. That's a hell of an outlet pass. Isagi would then look toward everybody on his team. Saying that they are now going to be playing his style of soccer. Follow his lead. Everyone looks at him and this is the first time he's taken command. He's taken the initiative. This isn't ego. This is his want to win. This is his competitive spirit. But at the same time, the ideas of keeping his team together, keeping that unity. He sees everyone on this field, at least on his side of the field, as someone in a dojo. Someone that would be his colleague. Someone that would be training next to him. At this moment, that's how he feels. So every time Baro comes charging in like a reckless bull, Izuki can easily counter him. Yes, he may be weaker, he may be smaller, he may be way skinnier than Baro, but at the same time, Baro's not using his teammates at all. Every time Izuki would rip him, he would look forward and he would look for another outlet. If the outlet wasn't there, they'd reset, and Izuki would let the offense flow through him. He would read the field to the best of his ability, and he would begin just going in and out of the defense very easily. Bachiro would cut across the field, and Izuki would tap the ball toward him. Perfect pass, landing right in front of him for the easiest goal of Bachiro's life. Bachiro would stand there and nod his head. He would believe that Izuki may be... In his own way, he is a monster. Izuki would get set once again, ready to go, and Team Z is up 3-0. to zero. Rotations begin to begin to flood in. They begin to you use and utilize other people's skills. I mean, Bachira is extremely, extremely good, especially with his dribbling. But people like Gagamaru, he is super athletic. He'll be able to dive forward like nothing. So, when we're talking about an outlet pass from Izuki that is perfectly, perfectly used, and on top of that, perfectly tapped right into the airspace of Gagamaru, it's a free goal. The other team doesn't know what to do. They hope that maybe Bado can break through the offense, or break through the defense with his own offense. Maybe they can set him up, but Bado is freaking out. He doesn't want help. He wants to do it on his own. He is the king of this field. Even the celebration of every goal that Team Z gets, it frustrates Bottle even more. More and more and more. Eventually to the point, he begins to think, maybe, maybe he'll use everyone else as decoys. Maybe he'll find his own goal like that. He begins to try and do this, but it seems like everywhere he goes, that same person is there. Izuki is there over and over and over again. How is this possible? What is happening? Eventually, Bado gets frustrated. So frustrated to the point that he kicks the ball straight at Izuki. Izuki would, would kind of be taken back by this, but would just dodge it. As he does, though, Bado is sprinting at Izuki. He realizes, well, Bado had an idea. A way for him to get a goal. Izuki watches as Bado charges forward toward the ball and would shoot. And he would score. Izuki, well, and his reactions and instincts, well, would be used against him. At least in this moment. Izuki would smile. Thinking that Bado definitely thought more ahead than he can possibly imagine. Especially for someone that just was freaking out moments ago. But... The following goals would still remain. Izuki would be able to easily set up his team as long as they're listening, getting another goal to Kunigami, and then eventually stopping Bado once again. Bado would feel that he needs to get better, stronger, faster, whatever, he doesn't care. He eventually leading him to running over Izuki, giving him a free kick. Izuki would kind of shake it off. He believed that he kind of needed to take the hit and it felt as if his body was telling him to, to do so as well because he knew that he would he would have every threat possible. Everybody would stand there thinking, is he going to shoot? No, no, no. He'll definitely pass. His passing ability is insane. No, no, wait. But his shooting, he can shoot too. He's, 
He's pinpoint accurate. We've seen him before. They're all th thinking, overthinking, and all they can do is wait. And that hesitation between the idea if he's going to pass or shoot allows him to pin the ball right in the top right of the net. It's a goal for Izuki. And they end up winning the match 6-1. to one. Everybody celebrates, including Izuki, being happy with his entire team. And everybody there has a realization. Maybe this guy has something within him. Maybe Izuki has something to this whole teamwork thing. He was able to allow everyone to flow so amazing. Allow everyone to flow so perfectly. It was interesting. It was as if he was the facilitator and he was allowing everybody to do their own thing, but at the same time, controlling them. But that's not exactly what he was doing. He was just going off of his, his instincts that he knew. He knew what the, the main issue and the main person at hand, how, what he needed to, how he needed to disrupt him and how he was going to disrupt him. And he did just that. That's one person down. Izuki was able to defeat the king, King Baro, and everybody is impressed, thinking that maybe even with a team of full strikers, they can become one. They can truly become a team that is coordinated and properly moves around the field. But it all starts with their willingness to work together and their willingness to avoid having an ego. It's weird, very odd. It's as if Izuki is a one in a million type of player. They all stare at him wondering if Jinpachi ego is really wrong. Wrong about all of this. Wrong about the number one striker needing an ego. Jinpachi ego is watching, currently scratching his head. I can't get a... a, a, a I don't know what it is about this kid. I can't get a read on him. What is he exactly? It seems that he's so calm, collected, but at the same time, how could he do something like this without having an ego? Jinpachi sits on it and thinks, thinks, what is he doing that's so much better than the people on the field with him, making them believe that they can do this without having a true striker's ego. He would stare at Izuki, stare at him. What are you exactly, Yoichi Izuki? You're more than just some football player, some striker. You're here for a reason, but even I didn't expect this. How are you doing this without an ego? How are you doing this Something rushes to Ego's head. Wait. He looks over to his assistant and looks back. I know exactly what this kid is. I don't know how I didn't see it before. He's not. He's not. No. No way. He's completely baffled at this idea that's flowing through his own head. Yoichi Izuki doesn't have an ego. But he has something even greater. Yuichi Izuki. Whatever he is, we all know one thing for sure. He's a football player and a damn good striker. The following day after strategy and a couple other maintenance things you could say occurred, Isagi is ready to lead his team against Team Y. Now... This match is going to be a little different. Yes, the other one went real well for them last time, but this one, they realized something. That Isagi had something going on with him that he, they realized that sometimes you need to follow a leader. This is a person that they see as someone who doesn't have an ego at all. Someone who loves soccer. Someone who is in love with soccer to the point that all he cares about is the game of soccer. Isagi is that type of person. 
So when they begin to speak about plays and different things that they should do defensively and offensively, let's say a lot of them fall in line pretty quick. A couple of them aren't really too keen on the positions they're in, but still Isagi is able to get their heads to be a little bit more clear. He tells them all of them will be part of a crucial, a crucial part of this team and he'll make sure to show them all that they really can do great things. Quickly against Team Y, when the game would begin, they would see that everything would begin to unfold. They would start with the ball and Isagi would start with it as well. Passing it up to Bachira, it's as if his pass felt like, well, there was stress off of everyone's shoulders. It's hard to explain. But as Bachira begins to use his dribbling, and as three people come to trap him, just based on any scouting report they've ever seen, and based on all the footage they've seen, they would eventually eventually trap Bachira. Bachira would lose the ball, yes, lose the ball, and would think that he really messed up now. As he goes to recover, he actually didn't even have to recover himself. Someone's already right there. Isagi. Isagi snatches the ball up, kicking it away from the, the three-man trap, and begins to blitz through the defense. As he skates through the defense, he does a weird-looking side pass. As he does this, the ball would then float right into the lap of Kunigami, as Kunigami would easily set up from his range and score like it's nothing. 1-0. to zero. They're currently up one goal, but they're expecting a fast start from the other team. It seems that Isagi has already picked up on kind of what they want to do. An outlet pass, something that is quick, something that is fast, but it seems like they're trying to set it up. They begin to pass the ball back and forth, as if they're waiting for a mistake. And Isagi would look at this. They truly are waiting for a mistake. <laughs> this is, this is, this is good. This is fantastic. This is probably the worst way to play against our team. Isagi would go blitzing in toward the ball, but as he does, he would make a sharp cut. Where is he going? Someone on the other team would pass the ball and he would be headed toward Nico, but Isagi would steal it. He would look at Nico and say that it was a good attempt, but this is definitely not the best strategy for them to go or to use against Team Z. He would then immediately pass the ball up as a sprinting Gagamaru would come out of nowhere, headering the ball that is just floating effortlessly, heavy, like as if it's just being hovered through the heavens itself, and headers the ball into the goal. Everybody is standing there in complete awe, or at least Team Y is. They're shocked. How did he shut it down so quickly? It's as if his body moved exactly where the ball was going to be, as if everything was trailing on his own, as if Every single one of his body parts knew what to do before the plan was even intact. Isagi would set up for defense once again, and they would believe that their best choice is to find that outlet pass. Try to avoid Isaki at the, at the most they possibly can. I mean, they don't want to deal with him at all. Eventually, about halfway through the first half, adjustments would then be made. Other people would get into different positions on Team Z, and the other team, Team Y, would look at this and be kind of shocked by it. But they do see one thing. Everything flows through Izuki. Yes, everything. It seems as if he's just passing and moving the defense as he wishes, and he uses himself as, decoy, as a decoy here and there. He's able to easily move people around and get people wide open, and everybody kind of gets the ball distributed to them. In terms of their plan, everything would get thrown out the window. Izuki would even bring up the fact that Nico's vision that he currently has could be used at s in such a better way. Doesn't he realize that? I mean, he could be insanely dy dynamic in the striker role. But right now, he's kind of just sitting back. He's not able to do much, especially from the range he's currently at. And Izuki would make this pretty well known as their team would begin to kind of dominate. I mean, it was just flat out an unfair matchup. It seems like Izuki has everything figured out and he even basically sticks Raichi on their most dynamic runner on the, on the other team. 
it's kind of just over. He knows what's going to happen before it even happens, and frankly, his body is just reacting to passes quicker than they could even really do anything about. Izuki would continue to try his best to get people goals and even kind of get himself goals or in position to score goals, but to be honest, he doesn't really find much advancement in it at the moment. Yes, the other team sits there and passes the ball back and forth trying to find openings, but those openings never come. Those openings are never even there. They're going to have to take a risk, a risk that is unpredictable, a risk that uh, they don't even know what to do. Nico even tries to kind of set himself up in an advantageous position for himself to score, but even that doesn't really work. Their plan is too simple, way too simplistic. At least Botto had the strength and, and height and just body type to blitz through people. It even gave Izuki a little bit of trouble, frankly. Yeah, it even gave him trouble. He even admitted this during their little session, but he was able to figure out Botto. His unpredictableness eventually slow and slowly petered away. But this whole whole game is kind of a weird back and forth of just stalling. So so Izagi Isagi tries to basically be more aggressive, take the more initiative in this place. As he does this, and as he begins to take that initiative, it seems as if his aggression is more calculated than anything. He begins to attack the ball, but as he does, he baits people into passing a certain way, and he's able to steal it. This is his own evolution. He realizes that, yes, his body moving on, the, on, on its own independently is something that is advantageous for himself, but there is still a sort of mind game to it. He can't just go about and go autopilot. He can't just run around and expect everything to fall into place. He needs to think as well. Let his body do the movement, but let his brain bait and confuse people at the same time. His body may go one way, but his mind could set someone else up to go another. He can bait, switch, and also freak people out. And on top of that, he can bait people into passing, shooting, or anything that they think that they think he's being predictable on. He can turn himself into a, a predictable person or a predictable player into someone that is so unpredictable that anything could happen at this moment, out of nowhere too. As he does this, he continues to try and pass the ball up, tries to pass the ball here and there, and even after halftime, he continues to try to thread the needle into places that normally he would never pass, but at the same time it was so unexpected, his predictableness is changing drastically. He's finding new ways to utilize his, his instinctual ability for soccer and his ultra instinct so that he can expand the field to greater heights. In doing so, this leaves Bajira, Kunigami, and many others to evolve their game as well. The fact that Izaki is practically maneuvering the field in various different ways, it's an amazing thing for someone like Bachira. Bachira would get the ball passed to him and they can't even trap him anymore. He utilizes his dribbling and he would realize something, that Izaki is different. Izaki is so different. I mean, he's not necessarily a monster or has a monster within him. It's kind of odd. He doesn't know how to explain it. He's not an egoist. He doesn't have an ego or even arrogance. He's so calm, collected. It's as if he draws people in with this kind of monotone relaxedness. He looks at Izuki one more time and then he would realize something. He would realize something about Izuki that he's alone, alone in his own space. He begins to see Izaki in a different way. He begins to see Izaki in a completely different way. Izaki is someone different. He begins to look at him and see that all the people around him disappear. It's as if his mind 
and body are two different beings. His body knows what's going to happen, feels what's going to happen, reacts to what's going to happen. His mind, he can see everything. His mind sees the people in front of him. He sees the people around him. He sees his teammates. But he realizes that Izuki is just as alone as he was. But he found solace in being alone. He found something over that road. He found something beyond the loneliness, beyond the, the, the solitude, beyond everything. Bachira would then speed up his dribbles, and it's as if he's now feeling something. He understands. He understands something. Izuki is different. Izaki knows something that no one else knows. Izagi is playing the brand of soccer that Bachira wants to play. But he does it differently. He does it better. But at the same time, he realizes that different is okay. He might not be Isagi. He's probably the farthest from it. Of course, he enjoys soccer, loves it just like him. But Isagi sees the world of soccer differently than he does. Just as Bachira has this realization, he blitzes through three, no, four people. And Isagi looks at him. Wow, are you evolving even more, Bachira? You're truly amazing. Bachira would blitz past everybody and a smile would grow over his face as if he relishes in the challenge of taking everybody on by himself. He kicks the ball and he scores. He, he stands there. He's truly awakened. Isagi, thank you. Thank you for being here. This has changed everything. In a game that seemed to be kind of standing still, Isagi not only found developments within himself, but developments within Bachira. Everybody around them is baffled by this. Even Kunigami sits there and stares. Wow, what kind of monsters are they? But no, they're not monsters. They're true strikers. Kunigami would have a realization draw over him entirely. He could be like that. He could be even better, maybe. The time would then run out, and the game would be over. It's a pretty low score, barring that Isagi more or less dominated and the team dominated. It would end up being about 4-0, to zero. but they got what they needed out of this. Some of the other people there as well would have a realization as, on top of it that Blue Lock is made for them to evolve, but they have to welcome that evolution. They can't stay stuck in the mud. They need to let it all go. And maybe, just maybe, they'll be able to up their game to the next level. With that said, the second match is over and done with. Team Y is defeated. And everyone begins to celebrate. Team Z takes it off the, the field and they begin to celebrate exactly what they have accomplished. Celebrate everything. They begin speaking to everybody, asking what what they believe to more or less be the, the catalyst of all of this. And even Kunigami begins to speak with with Isagi, wondering how he could get better. All he wants to do is get better. Of course, everyone feels the same way, especially, especially after all of the rankings begin to update. Ego would begin seeing the potential in all of them, and he would throw in a little wrench in the plan, you could say. Yes, everything is based off of, well, you know, goals. But he believes that if he puts Iz Izuki as the number one in their group, well, they can 
evolve even greater, evolve even more. So when they begin to see that Izuki is this far ahead, the training would then ensue. And Izuki would feel that his, his place is to make all of them even greater. And it's not only in training, not only just out there on the field. He wants to expand everything and even tap into the head of one defeated Chiguri. And eventually he would get that chance. He would speak with Chiguri and eventually it would be revealed that he tore his ACL a year ago. Tore it. And he's been afraid ever since to run on it ever again. Izuki would then tell him that he hopes he didn't come here to just let his dreams die. That unfortunately, he won't allow it to happen. He apologizes if that's exactly what he wants. But he believes that whatever he was in the past, he can be that, but even better. He tells him that even in his past, he failed almost at every turn. He began in martial arts, tried to learn, tried to understand what the senseis and, and teachers were telling him, and he didn't. They would explain to him that every body part that he has needs to more or less be reacted to and used on their own independently. Yes, without mind, without brain, without any thinking. And Chiguri would say that he figured it out. What is he talking about? This is no relation. And Izuki would say that he didn't figure it out. Not in martial arts, at least. He figured it out in football, in his love for football. So if Chiguri truly loves this game, and he loves it to death, he'll take the risk. He'll stomp his foot on the ground as hard as possible. No fear in tearing his ACL. And he'll run again. He'll run faster than he's ever ran before. And he promises the ball, the ball will be waiting for him. And the ball will be ready for him to enjoy football once again. And Chiguri is shocked to hear this. And Izuki would then yawn. He would tell him that he's tired. And he's going to go to sleep now. And he hopes that he does the same. Because they do have a big match tomorrow against Team X. He leaves to lay down. And when he does, he closes his eyes. Thinking that he hopefully made a difference in Chiguri's mind. Hopefully. He feels that all he wants to do right now is make a difference. In Bachira, Kunigami, Chiguri, Gagamaru, Raichi. Even, even the monk boy. He doesn't care. All of them. He wants to have a difference in all of them. Because at the end of the day, that is what he wants. And that is what he truly is as a person, but as also as a lover of football and an obsessive of the game. While everybody is asleep, one person is still up watching film tape. No, not one of the players, but actually Jimpachi Ego. He's staring at the screen, watching the second match with Isagi. He continues to stare at it as he continues to just analyze what's going on, what's happening, and how he was able to do all the things he was able to do. He already knows. He knows exactly what Isagi can do at least in terms of having his own ego. Of course, his little assistant would question what he's talking about, and eventually, he would reveal it. You see, Isagi is different. He's not the normal egoist. Yes, he actually is far above it. His little technique what he deems as instinctual ability or ultra instinct. Well, that right there is a technique among gods of soccer, among gods of football. Yes, that is what makes him the greatest egoist, the greatest egoist 
I've ever seen. Someone that is calm, stoic, and relaxed. Yes, it might seem that there's no way he has an ego. He's too nice to have one. But that's not true. He has something even greater than an ego. He has... Hmm... Something that even the gods would fear. Of course, the woman there would be confused. What the hell is he even talking about? This kid is not a god. But Ego would turn to her sharply. I didn't say he was a god. But like every great surgeon, he has a different type of Ego. He has, well, a god complex. But not to the level that you would even think. It's confusing even for me sometimes when I watch him play. But you can tell that deep down inside, he knows that he needs to help everyone else because he's omnipotent compared to all of them. He's that much better. Isagi would wake up the next day and after some training and after some time in between, their next match would ensue. Team Z would take on Team W. And Isagi would look at the team and kind of soak it all in. What exactly makes them great? What exactly makes them good? What allowed them to get their first win? What allowed them to have success in the first place? He continues to think as more or less they begin the match. But as they do, his body would move on its own, like it always does. But he knows that his mind should begin thinking and reading the situation so that he can coordinate and more or less know everything that's happening no matter what. Even if his body would break. He continues to run as he sees the two twins, the Wanama twins, taking the ball and practically playing a two-person game. As he sees this, he has a realization. It's another one of them. <laughs> another two-person game. It was like Nico and that other guy before. Now it's these Wanama twins. Why? Why do they think so small? He's confused. He begins to think to himself that they can do so much more. They could be amazing, fantastic, just overall great. Why think so small? Only two people involved is ridiculous. His defense would be sharp. He would immediately think that he should jump on one of the twins and just completely take them out of the game defensively. So that's what he does. He immediately would face guard one of the twins and he would allow his body to react to the movements of the other. And as he does this, one of his teammates would go speeding by stealing the ball. Yes, this is the defensive monster Raichi, influenced by Isagi's just willingness to defend and willingness to try extremely hard to section off their team entirely. He takes it upon himself to be a better defender than Is Izagi is currently at this moment. He believes if he can't keep up in the striking department, he's not going to let him outshine him in the defense department. I mean, he's been back on defense this entire time. So he cuts through, stealing the ball. He looks up immediately and he was hesitate. He would wonder, does he take it himself? Ah, uh, whatever. He passes the ball and Bachira picks it up. He begins to dribble the ball past one person, then two, then three. Isagi would then cut across the field, get receiving the pass from Bachira. Isagi would cut across, dribbling between two people, and he would cut through with ease. And then he would be at around Kunigami's range. Yeah, he looks to the side, and Kunigami is cut off, and he smirks. It's okay. Uh, he, he begins to think that he'll do what Kunigami can do as well. He kicks the ball and his normal pass that just lofts over, it looks majestic, would look like a missile. He would kick the ball so hard that it would just go right by the goalie 
He couldn't even react to it. What the? Isagi would look toward Kunigami and give him a thumbs up. And Kunigami would realize that Isagi was able to do what he was able to do. But how? It was as if he was able to kind of mimic it. But no, was he able to do this the entire time? Has he really been that good this entire time? I mean, what's the point of all of them then? Isagi would back up as it's one to zero, and he would begin to just go back on defense now, waiting for the Wanama twins to pursue once again, in which they would do the same thing. They would try to more or less attack, but this time they want to avoid Isagi at all costs. In doing so, it forces people like Chuguri to actually pursue in defense, but of course, he can't keep up. They even taunt him saying that he's useless without his speed, he should just quit now, you might as well just lay on the ground. They would blitz by, but luckily, Raichi would be able to keep up and actually mimic what Isagi was doing before. He would pick one of the twins and section him off, them off entirely, keeping up and just more or less keeping his body exactly parallel to him, making sure that he can't even cut and get a burst of speed out of the break. Raichi would be amazing in terms of this game he would be stopping them cold in their tracks isagi would see that he got enough time and he would reach the other wanama twin stealing the ball he would look up the fields and as he does his body would just jerk a certain direction and kick the ball straight out what wait what was that am i clearing it he's confused this is the first time he's ever questioned what his body's doing but why why did i kick it in the open area that far away he would look around and then he would feel this gust of wind whoa he looks to his left and he sees this red-haired person sprinting down the sideline at insane speeds it's chiguri he immediately sees this and that's why his body reacted that's why he kicked it over there He's going to reach it? He reaches the ball before anybody else is even close, sprinting down the sideline and outpacing everybody. He makes one move and he only had one defender to beat. He kicks the ball and the goalie doesn't even stand the chance. Not one chance. Of course, these goalies are strikers. I mean, this is kind of unfair when you think about it. You put a goalie in the goal, that's a striker. I mean, it doesn't go too well half the time. But still, Chiguri would do something insanely impressive, and now they're up 2-0. to zero. Isagi would, would ask Chiguri, what kind of speed was that? That's even faster than what he thought. Chiguri would tell him to stop, stop being so modest. I mean, sometimes there's a realization that he needs to have that he's affecting the entire field all of the time. Isagi would hear this, and he would take the compliment. He would thank him for it. As they would line back up, Chiguri could tell that Isagi would refuse to allow his ego to say anything else other than being nice and appreciative. It's kind of funny in a way, but still, he's a dynamic player, so who's to complain? There's no world that anybody else would have made that pass, especially at the right time and in the amount of time Isagi just did. It's genuinely impressive and kind of just breathtaking. 2-0, like I said, and the Wanama Twins feels, feel as if they have no answer for anything they're doing, especially now that Chiguri has his speed back. It's insane. What are they supposed to even do? The Wanama Twins try to get everybody else involved. Maybe they could use the other people as a way of a decoy. Maybe they can use decoys and so on and so forth to stop well isagi from reacting yeah yeah that's what they'll do they'll, they'll use other people they'll, they'll they'll pass it in between people and then they'll, they'll they'll cut through 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 the shadows behind them yeah that, that will work isagi sees it all it's all just being read yes his body may move on its own but his mind is still at work while watching all of this so all he's doing is gathering more and more information information 
that maybe his body wasn't ready to react to yet. Every little bit of information from distance, up close, all of it just makes his instincts grow larger, better, and more potent. Like it's said before, like many have seen with Isagi, he may not have a traditional ego, but that ego is not within one's mind, but it's obviously within his body. And they've seen glimpses of it. He knows that with his own mind, he has to put himself in situations and, and put himself in positions to stop certain things, just like he did with the Wanama twins. And it would we would see proof. But when he would steal the ball this time around, he would feel something channel over him as if his want for another goal was screaming. He would then kick the ball forward and everybody would try to stop him. We're talking every person. It seems as if all of their defensive defenders and everybody would try and stop Isagi, but there is no stopping him. One person would get walked through. Another would get a spin move. The next would get nutmegged. The next would just easily get drove and cut by and everybody would be watching this. This is insane. There's no trapping him. There's no double teaming him. There's no nothing. How are they supposed to do anything? But as he's about to basically get past half field and as he's passing half field, he would chip the ball toward the right side floating as it does just in the range of the deadly striker Kunigami. One kick, one goal. Now they're up four to zero. It seems like this game is out of reach. Impossible at this point. The Wanama twins can't keep up and Isagi's just fluid movement and reading of the field is way too much for anybody to handle. And it, the fact is, his entire team is buying in. That's all they're doing. The Wanama twins, once they started falling behind, their whole team was collapsing. And this has been a common theme. I mean, they've seen it with every single team practically. The star players that have been doing so well and winning for them. Well, it all collapses when they can't do anything anymore. And everything collapses. Isagi knows this, realizes this, and understands this, that as long as he's able to adapt and stop these star players from doing anything, these matches are all in the favor of Team Z. And he believes that wholeheartedly. He believes that entirely. So throughout the rest of the game, he gets his goals and the rest of the team does as well. But just like the last game, just like before, he allowed Bachira and now Raichi to evolve, to transcend whatever they've been doing. Chiguri has already shown that he's back, but now he wants to have Kunigami evolve. He continues to pass in between and give open shots and open looks to Kunigami, but before the whistle would blow, he would, he would chip the ball toward Kunigami and he would be confused. Isagi would tell him that he needs to press on his own and understand his own instincts. What does he want out of this sport? What does he want to be in this sport? Kunigami would look at the ball. He would begin dribbling it up. And Isagi, he can watch as Isagi sprints away, around. And it's as if he's using himself as a decoy. Kunigami would think, what do I want out of this sport? Well, that's easy. Very easy. Kunigami wants to be a superhero. Soccer's superhero. He looks to, toward the goal. His range is so far away. But Isagi would look at him. And it's as if Isagi and his entire body is screaming at Kunigami. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it. As he's staring at him, Kunigami would look back and he would stare at Isagi. He really wants me to. Kunigami would completely smile. 
he would boot the ball so hard that it would stop spinning. But this time around, it was different. He, he normally would believe that this is far beyond his range. But this time around, the ball would go soaring and it would go right at the goalie. Uh, easy catch, right? No, wrong. The ball would then skid upwards as it floats right above him. And Kunigami just did something superhero-like. Isagi would walk over as the whistle would then be blown after they beat them pretty handedly by a large margin. And he would run over to Kunigami and he would say that he really looked like a superhero. He was really impressed. As Isagi says this and then runs away, Kunigami is confused. Did he just read my mind? How does he even know about that? He's confused and conflicted at the same time. Isagi, can you see the future? Isagi would stop as he hears Kunigami. He turns around. No, I can't see the future. But I will say, players in a sport that they love like this, well, they're pretty predictable. And honestly, you kind of remind me of a superhero. Big stature, very, well, you know, aggressive in your kicking. You're kind of like, hmm, who would you be like? Like Superman. You're the Superman of soccer. He would then run away, com completely leaving the area and heading off to go celebrate with his team. Kunigami would sit there or stand there. The Superman of soccer. If the Superman of soccer is me, well, that means I need to evolve even more. He would look at his own feet and begin thinking that, that everything that makes him great involves in his superior physicality, his willingness to be strong and fit and willingness to, to use his size to his own advantage, like what he just did right now. But what if he did more? What if he did even more? He begins to think that in this short amount of time in Blue Lock, he's done so much, at least to an extent, but there's no way he can lift enough, work out enough to make himself even bigger and stronger. Maybe there's some other way he can do that. He's lethal from one side. But what if he's lethal from both? Staring at both of his feet, it's as if a realization would come over the superhero. A realization of how to evolve even greater. Isagi would be with his team and Kunigami would soon join. They would celebrate. They would win three out of the three matches they've already, well, won. They're excited, happy, but they know what's to come next. Team V. Team V is going to be interesting, you could say. Team V has been built up to be this powerhouse. Insane, insane team. He believes that, that maybe Team V will give them a bit of a challenge. And eventually he would run into, well, part of Team V. Rayo, Nagi, and when encountering them, he would speak to some of them, but it seems that they weren't the friendliest. But at the same time, Nagi would say something that would kind of tick off Isagi. That he doesn't love soccer, as if he's not taking soccer seriously. The sport that Isagi loves so much, he would stop them and he would tell Nagi to apologize. To say that soccer is, well matters say that it's important nagi would be confused reo would tell him to to buzz off i mean why are you being weird isagi this is the first time he's been pissed he's stoic his face is serious bachura and kunigami would come by and grab him up hey man it's it's okay it's it's fine well, what's wrong isagi would then say that guy over there he doesn't He's talking bad about football, about 
the sport we love. Kunigami and Bachira say that he they know that he loves the game of, of football. They understand that. But everyone can have their own opinions. It's okay. He he then stomps his foot down. Then why is he even here? Hmm. He doesn't deserve to be here. If that's how he feels about football. Isagi would storm out. This is the first time they've ever seen him this mad. The love for soccer that Isagi has runs so deep within himself that's, I mean, he has literally Ultra Instinct because of it. All of the skill that he's built up is because of the love for soccer. Isagi would go to the bathroom and splash his face, looking in the mirror. I'm going to make Team V regret ever having that guy on their team. Isagi would nod toward himself and he would see his own reflection and this giant aura behind him. He's not sure what it was, what it was that day and what it was at that moment. But eventually they would step on the field. Team V versus Team Z. A fight and a battle. Yes, that's what it is for Isagi. A fight and a battle. Maybe even a war. Isagi is going to show them exactly what he's capable of. Isagi is ready for the match against Team V. Even Bachira is questioning why he's so serious and just intent on destroying this team. And Isagi says that it should infuriate him too. He mocks the sport they love so much. He mocks it, that, that guy. What is his name, Nagi? He just sits there and acts lazy and acts like the sport doesn't matter. He doesn't, I don't care if he's some prodigy. I don't care if he's so gifted at football that he doesn't even have to train. Isagi would begin to rant on as they're walking out onto the field and Bachira, for the first time ever, is surprised. He's surprised that Isagi's reacting such a way. He's kind of worried. I mean, to the point that, is this going to hurt his own performance? Kunigami even steps in, saying that Isagi shouldn't let this get to him. I mean, Nagi's only one person. They all love soccer. And Isagi looks at Kunigami and says that he knows they all love soccer. That's why he's tried his best and his absolute best to help them every step of the way. But this Nagi guy, he needs to learn a lesson. That you don't mock soccer. And of course, everyone is completely thrown back by this. The normally extremely happy, psyched out, and just calm Isagi is infuriated, pissed. He's livid, in fact. And everybody's sitting there or standing there and just watching him just be irate. Eventually, they would get to the field and Isagi would be stone-faced, serious, and Rayo would look over and he would regard to Nagi that it seems that he got under the guy's skin. Maybe this is good for us. Rayo would, would go over toward Isagi and ask if he's alright, but Isagi wouldn't say a word. He would just stare at Rayo. Rayo would back up and act kind of tough, saying that he hopes Isagi doesn't try to cheap shot Nagi or anything like that. And Isagi wouldn't say anything, standing there, silent. Bachira would snap toward him, saying that the, the game is about to start and he hopes he's ready. He would nod toward Bachira as if he's already completely locked in. Bachira would more or less kick the ball to Isagi off the bat and he would become, he would become just a one-man wrecking crew. He begins to just cross and dip and dive and dodge everyone. Everyone is shocked. He's moving so fluidly. If there's three people around him, it's as if he knows every shortcut, every movement to go past. And eventually, Isagi's face to face with Nagi right in front of him. He would easily get by him and Nagi would be shocked. What kind of guy is he? First goal would go to Isagi, easily too. Isagi would show them and show everyone that he's truly on a different level. Is that his intention? Maybe not, but it seems that his body has more or less listened to his mind, the anger that he has toward the idea that Nagi thinks he's so much better than soccer, so much better than football, the football he loves. Well, 
it's taking over now. His normal mindset, the calm, the relaxed, the no ego at all, is slowly but surely catching up to his body. His body's reactions, movement, and his, his actions entirely are full of an egotistical player, an egoist player. But his mind never was. But anger has crept in, and now his mind is on the same track. One goal, and Isagi's already feeling it. He can feel something that he hasn't felt before. He would back up, and he would wait, and he would wait for the defense well, the defense of his own team, defenders, to creep up just a little bit more. As they do, and Rayo, and Rayo gets the ball and looks for an easy outlet pass to either Zantetsu or Nagi, it seems that Isagi is already gambling. Gambling right toward Rayo, but as Rayo kind of panics at the speed that Isagi is running at, Isagi would immediately bail off. What? How did he? Immediately, though someone else would come collapsing down. It's Raichi. Raichi played off of the distraction that Isagi created and steals the ball before Nagi can even touch it. Nagi's confused. How are they reacting so quickly? Raichi smirks and passes the ball back to Isagi. He says that it's now his turn to have some fun. I mean, he's been so nice this entire time. He's never seen the guy angry. He's excited. Isagi would go blitzing forward, Nagi not even be able to keep up, and Isagi can immediately tell that someone on the far left side is going straight down the sideline at insane speeds. Isagi would look up, and he would look for the pass, but as he kicks, he actually digs his foot into the ground. He doesn't actually pass it. Three to four defenders fall for the fake, and he dribbles right by them, just like that. And from about 25 meters out, he would drill the ball in the top left corner of the goal. Everybody is shocked. Team V is already down. Down two points. How? Two goals, just like that. Isagi, how is he able to? Just as Rayo is about to tell them that they gotta get their head on straight, Nagi, the presence of him, can be felt from miles away. Rayo would look over. Nagi, are you okay? He looks toward Rayo. Just get me the ball. Just as he says this, Rayo would easily pass it into Nagi, and Isagi would look toward Nagi. Oh, so you're finally playing, are you? A game you don't even enjoy? Well, <laughs> we'll see if you can get by me. Isagi would immediately put the clamps on Nagi. Nagi would try his best to get away. He would be forced to pass it up to Rayo, and trying to more or less give a do a give and go but Isagi reads this blocking the ball Nagi immediately would attack the ball once again trying to use his overwhelming ball control to his own advantage but it's so difficult it's so so hard for him to do anything he can't stop Is Isagi he can't stop him from doing what he wants Isagi's movement would then put a spin move on Nagi Nagi would go spinning and would see Isagi blitz by him Rayo would yell out to Nagi to try and recover, and he would go for it as well. He would try his best. He tries entirely to recover, and he would eventually catch up, just in time. It seems that Nagi's about to actually steal the ball, but as he tries, well, Isagi does the weirdest pass they've ever seen. It's as if he stomps on the ball, and his back heel pops it in a certain direction. As he does this, it falls in the lap of Kunigami. Well, Blue Lock's superhero has just arrived. Isagi would look toward Nagi and smirk and say that a superhero of this game that they love is the one with the ball now. He kicks the ball 40, maybe f almost 50 meters out, and he drills it through the goal. Everybody is taken back. Has their team really destroyed everybody to the point well that this this fight or this this battle this 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 match isn't even going to be fair isagi even tells them this saying that they may have won every other match and this match might not matter but all he wants to do is embarrass them and that's exactly what isagi would do he would make them look 
like jokes. Zantetsu may be trying to get open, trying to find his ways in and out and around Chiguri, but if it, it felt as if there was no openings. He would cut to try to make space, cut to try to get any room at all. But if Chiguri wasn't there, someone else was filling in the gaps. It felt like they were just a well-oiled machine. All they were doing was feeding off of the energy Isagi was putting forward. And in terms of Nagi, well, he continues to want the ball to be fed toward him. He wants it, and eventually he would get the outlet pass he wanted this entire time. The pass would come soaring in for Nagi, Rayo launching the ball across the field, but as Nagi goes up to control it and sustain it, one person meets him in the sky, Isagi. Isagi would meet him up there, fighting Nagi as they fight for control over the ball. And Isagi, in his own mind, and even verbally to an extent, is telling Nagi that he's going to beat him at his own game. If this is what he's good at, well, he'll be better than him at it. And he shows exactly that. He shows how his, his instincts for football begin to take over. But as well as on top of that, his mind... An egotistical part of his mind is now bringing even more out of his movements and even more out of his game. Nagi is shocked, but as he realizes that Isagi is trying to match him, he would evolve himself, kicking the ball backwards and then knocking it up mid-air with his other foot. Isagi would see this and his body would already be reacting. He back, he back foots, he hits the back or his heel on the ball, on the ball mid-air, and it flings the ball a different direction. Nagi is confused. He's never even shown himself to do that. He's never done that ever. How, how did he react to it? How, he's amazing. Nagi's just normal, serious face would then drift away, and a smile would begin growing on it. Reo would be confused. Zantetsu, Zantetsu would be as well. What is he smiling for? What is he so happy about? What is happening? Isagi wouldn't even really even realize anything that's going on. He would turn and see the ball recovered by Raichi. He would go sprinting down as Raichi would pass the ball up. He would signal to Raichi to continue to run. And he would deliver a pass so beautiful that nobody would even dare watch it or nobody even would dare try to stop its momentum. It would float, and it would be in a perfect position for Raichi to get his first goal. He scores and looks toward Isagi with a smirk, as if he knew he got his get back, that Isagi just allowed Raichi to score and allowed him to be entertained for himself. Isagi would line back up and just get ready for the next the next kickoff just get ready for whatever's to come now and it's not even halftime yet nagi knows that he has to evolve but if isagi is going to evolve quicker than him how is he supposed to do anything he looks around looking toward reo zentetsu no they have to do something they have to no what what is he he looks around the field and it's as if everybody else disappears except for one person isagi Isagi, the only one standing there staring toward Nagi, as if his eyes haven't left him this entire time. Nagi is standing there in shock. What is this guy? What is soccer for him? And what is it like playing with soccer with him? He's completely taken back. Isagi is a different monster. A completely different player. Nagi though, his smile would grow as he continues to try and be competitive with Isagi. And Isagi would quickly realize that Nagi's love for soccer is slowly but surely shining through the cracks of his laziness. And quickly enough, Nagi would all get this urge, an overwhelming feeling of not only playing with Isagi side by side, but beating him, 
That's what he wants. Everything. His love for, for football all comes down to this. His love for soccer is this right here. Competition. Rayo was never able to deliver that to him. Yes, he was always seen as a prodigy. Always allowed to do whatever he wanted. Always allowed to do whatever he would like. But Isagi, he's taking all of that away. So, what could he give him if they were on the same side of the field? If they were playing together? As Nagi thinks about this, and the idea overwhelms him, it's as if in the entire game would pass by. The, well, the game would end up being a complete wash, a blowout. Nagi would just go through the motions, trying to evolve to beat Isagi, but there was no way to close that gap. There was no chance for him to even reach the, 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 the level he was at, but he wants to know. He wants to know what that feels like, as the whistle would then sound, and Team V would lose by a whopping 12 points and Isagi would score so many of those goals. He might have set up a couple of his teammates, but all of that pastime that Nagi didn't know what was happening and Nagi stood there as if the world was just on fast forward, as if it was just inevitable that Isagi's team would win. Well, he watched and he tried to beat Isagi the entire time, but all he did was score. There was no stopping him. Isagi was unstoppable, unbeatable. Isagi would eventually walk over toward Nagi. At the end of everything, he would walk over and say that it was a good game. I mean, at least to an extent. But he told him, he told him that he would make sure that they didn't have a chance in this game. Rayo begins to walk over to get Isagi away from him, telling, telling him to just go away. He already won the match, but Nagi would reach out and stop Isagi from leaving. Nagi, with a smile on his face, very odd-like for sure, he would say that, well, he wants to love soccer like Isagi loves soccer. This would take Isagi back. What are you talking about? You basically said that you didn't like soccer, you hated it, that as if you were just lazy, only, what? You don't even make sense. Isagi can't even wrap his head around it, but Nagi would repeat it, saying that whatever the love he has for this game, the game they all play, he wants to feel that same love. He wants to be like Isagi. No, he wants to be better than him. He's not sure if it's possible, but he'll find out, and he'll make sure that he can I, I, find a way and Isagi's confused but then his emotions would settle down he would nod toward Nagi and he would say that a prodigy like himself probably never trained a day in his life but imagine if he did imagine if he worked hard he saw how much better he got throughout this game and how much well himself he had to adjust now imagine if he works hard, trains hard, and eventually they step on the field together. Maybe, maybe just maybe, Nagi could be the best football player to ever exist, the best striker to ever exist. But Isagi says that they may never know. Maybe. He doesn't know how to feel about Nagi at this moment. He can tell that he definitely persuaded Nagi with his well, emotions and flat out his gameplay and how good he was on the field. But how much can he believe that Nagi wants to truly love this game that he loves so much? He walks away and he would begin to celebrate with his team. They would all begin to celebrate and soon, soon after the celebration, preparation for the second selection would begin. Ego has the remaining strikers undergo physical conditioning and frankly just just strength enhancement in general. Everybody pushes themselves to the limit, including Isagi. Isagi wants to just 
make sure that he's up to par, up to the next status. And Nagi himself is doing exactly the same. He's pushing and just pushing himself harder than he's ever pushed himself before. These workouts may not be super difficult for him, but he doubles them. He makes it even harder for himself, triples them. And Rayo thinks he's a maniac. He thinks he's insane. What is wrong with him? But still, there's nothing really that needs to be said about that, at least to an extent. And he wants to make sure, he wants to make sure that he's ready the next time he sees Isagi, either against him or with him. But Ego does more or less have the strikers undergo physical conditioning, like I said, and eventually Ego would reveal that all the buildings at Blue Lock were actually labeled as Building 5 to get everybody to experience this inferiority, more or less saying that they were all the bottom of the barrel. He explains that the first selection was about understanding what being a striker is about, and he explains all of this. He says that having an ego is something that all of them must understand, but at the same time, they all must understand various different things on top of that. A formula for getting your goal at any time, and on top of that, how to utilize others to find exactly what you're looking for. Of course, after all the explanation, the second selection would be explained and told that it's basically just a series of individual talent or challenges in five stages in which only teams of five strikers will make it through to the end. In the first stage, actually it's something pretty interesting. It's some holographic blue lock man. Isagi would see this and he would make really quick work of this holographic blue lock man, even in the higher stages. They would have 90 minutes to score 100 goals and Isagi would clear it relatively fast. Actually, he would clear it the fastest in blue lock. He would arrive and nobody is even there yet. He would, when he was, when he was basically just standing there, he would begin thinking that it's probably good for him to wait for somebody that he knows. Maybe it's for the best if he waits for someone like Bachira. I mean, Bachira has always been a good friend to him so far. Yes, eventually, some one person can only win, so they're going to have to go their separate ways eventually, but he would like him on his team. Same thing with Kunigami. Maybe he'll wait for him. Maybe he'll see him sooner rather than later. But the next person that actually comes in is someone he doesn't even recognize. He sees him walk in, and it's Rin. He learns of his name pretty quickly as he asks for it. I mean, Isagi's a very friendly person, but Rin would just say that he wants to be on a team with him, and he would be confused, saying that he doesn't even know the guy. Rin says it doesn't matter who they are or what they are, they're going to win anyways, so you might as well just get on his team. They need a team of three, so you might as well just enter the same team and then head off to the next room, especially whoever's next to come out. Of course, Isagi is kind of taken back by this. Does he really want this to happen? I mean, he doesn't really know this person. He doesn't know him at all. So does he really want to be with him? He's not so sure. Frankly, it's kind of off-putting in a way. He's not so sure who he is, but he does know that Rin is extremely good. Rin would then look at his side and he would see the badge on his arm. He would see that he's ranked number two, but then he would realize something. He would look at, Is at Isagi. No way, it's you? Of course Isagi would be confused. He would look at Rin and be in complete, just, you know, confusion. And Rin would say that he doesn't look like someone that would be the number one in Blue Lock at the moment, saying that there's no way he's better than him. Now they have to be on the same team. Rin says that he's going to make sure Isagi watches from the stands as he becomes the best striker. And as he says this, someone from behind would say that he really shouldn't be that cocky. That it's kind of annoying, especially when directed at someone as nice as 
Isagi. And Isagi would look, and it's Kunigami. No way! You got here so quick, Kunigami. Kunigami would then kind of laugh. Why is it surprising? Do you really think so little of me? Isagi would respond and wave his hands at no, not at all. He's just happy he didn't have to wait very long to see a, f a familiar face. And Kunigami would laugh, and he would say that, I mean, he is going to be the superhero of football, so he knew that he needed to take himself to the next level, ASAP, especially with someone like Isagi already standing so far in front of them. Isagi would, would nod his head and would ask him to be a team with him, and Kunigami would ask if he's on the same team as this guy right here. Rin would look over and shake his head. No, we're not on the same team together. I'll be waiting for other people. Isagi just shrugs this off, saying that he guesses that Rin wants to go against him. I mean, he is number two, he'd probably want to go against number one. Rin would be annoyed, and he would begin thinking, why is this guy so damn nice? This is just annoying. Eventually, someone else would come out, and it would be Nagi. Nagi would be the next person coming out, and there would be a new and improved Nagi coming out. It's, it feels as if he's a different person. Even Kunigami realizes this. He says it. He says that Nagi just feels different. Nagi would arrive, and he would immediately go to Isagi. He would begin to absolutely plead for him to allow him to be on the same team as him. He wants to be on the same team. He wants to whatever he wants to evolve he wants to get better he wants to show him that he does love soccer he wants to have the same love for soccer as him isagi stands there and kunigami shrugs he says that it's his call he knows him and bachura are pretty good friends but if he believes that this is the best well and suit most suitable thing maybe he should do it isagi would stand there he's not sure what to do should he go with nagi Nagi and Kunigami, or should he wait for Bachira and go him, Bachira, and Kunigami? He's standing there. He doesn't know. What should he do? More people begin to come in, more and more and more. And eventually, Bachira would arrive as well. And he would arrive earlier than usual, too. I mean, don't get me wrong, Bachira has evolved himself as well. Actually, evolved quicker than most people. But he's not necessarily a striker. I mean, he's a, a, a master at dribbling the ball. But he's not a striker in the sense of a dynamic scorer. In terms of just being able to shoot from anywhere on the field. But you can kind of say relatively something similar for Nagi. But to be fair, they, hadn't, they really haven't seen much out of Nagi. So maybe that's why he thinks that. But he could tell Nagi is a, pro a prodigy. And if all of this is true, if everything is true about how much he's done and what he's done so far, well, maybe that, maybe it's, it's, it's good to go if he goes against Nagi. But he's sitting there. He's not so sure. Should he really? Should he really go against or go with Nagi instead of Bachira? Kunigami would tell him that it's up to him, and even Bachira would say that he's happy with whatever decision that Isagi decides to make, and Isagi would stand there. He watches as Reo even enters, enters as well, and he watches as Rin walks off with two other people he doesn't recognize. Hmm. So either Nagi or Bachira. He looks toward Bachira, and then back to Nagi. Hmm. Well, Nagi, I think our little excursion and your want to play with me is going to have to wait a little bit longer because my loyalty is to Bachira and Team Z. Kunigami and Bachira would both smile and they would begin to walk toward the door. Nagi says that he'll play against him. If they play against each other, he's going to win. And he's going to make sure to win. Rayo is shocked. What? This guy? What is wrong with Nagi? I mean, he's so emotional right now. He's pushing and pushing 
and pushing. That's all he he wants to make sure that he can play against Isagi. But the thing is, he might not be able to. He might not ever be able to. There's a good chance. But you never know. Maybe, just maybe, the time would come. But Isagi, Bachira, and Kunigami would enter. And they would begin to more or less look forward to who they're going against. Of course, when they walk through, the first person or the first people Isagi would see is Rin and two others. Two very, very high level people as well. And these people are no joke, no slouch. Actually, the furthest from it. Rin, Jupei, and Tokamitsu. They're standing there waiting for someone to challenge them. Isagi would look toward Kunigami and Bachira and ask them if they want to take on the challenge of them. And they would look at each other and as they're about to step forward and take on that challenge, someone from behind him grabs onto his shoulder. He grabs him by that shoulder and tells him that he challenges Isagi. He turns and it's Nagi with a team of himself, Rayo, and Chiguri. He's, he's shocked. That quick, huh? You really wanted this, well, game against me. And Nagi would assure him that he wanted the game badly. Rin would walk over and say that it's not that simple. He wants to challenge Isagi as well. He wants to make sure he takes him down and takes his number one spot. And, of course, here's another dilemma. He has another dilemma to do. Does he, does he take on Rin in the first round, take on the number two, and take on the challenge of taking on this three-man powerhouse and allow Rin to try and prove what he's truly worth? Or does he take on the team of Nagi, Reo, and Chiguri first and see what Nagi has in store for him this time around and see if he's truly ready to evolve? Well, you'll have to find out what offer I Isagi accepts in the next part and the finale of what if Isagi had Ultra Instinct. Isagi has a choice. Does he want to take on the challenge of Rin, the number two in Blue Lock in technicality at this moment? Or does he want to take on Nagi's team? Nagi's overwhelmingly want or overwhelming want to actually take on uh, Isagi once again is kind of insane. Isagi didn't expect this. Yes, he knew Nagi wanted to be by his side and learn and also develop and grow as a team. But the fact that he wants to take him on here and now is kind of insane. He wants to do it really badly. Rin, on the other hand, wants to prove his worth it seems like rin has a massive chip on his shoulder but isagi feels obligated to take on nagi chiguri and reyo he's not 100 percent sure why but he'll take them on so it's a 3v3 bachira isagi and kunigami versus nagi uh, chiguri and reyo in terms of matchups I'll be honest, Rayo is kind of out of his own league. In terms of speed, Chiguri is definitely an issue. But Isagi already has his eyes set on one thing and one thing only. And that's guarding Chiguri. And everyone is confused. Why not guard Nagi? Nagi is definitely dynamic. But Isagi says that Chiguri's speed is going to be too much for anybody else to handle and that he'll be able to react to it better than anyone else. And he tells Kunigami that he'll show that he can show everyone here that he's a superhero for a reason, the superhero of football by taking on Nagi, the prodigy. And Isagi seems like he's setting Nagi up for something that even 
they don't realize. He's setting Nagi up to get better, but at the same time setting Kunigami up to get better as well. And in this, in this match, that's exactly what would happen. In the battle between Kunigami and Nagi, it's not a chess match. It's a match of just who can evolve quicker. It's a game to five, so there's limited time, but still, there's an amazing thing happening here. Isaki would shut down Chiguri, and Rayo would begin second guessing himself to the max. We're talking about he doesn't understand or know where to where to aim, where to shoot. Should he go here, there, anywhere? He he's not sure. He has no idea at all. He's really confused, to be honest. He's not a hundred percent sure how he wants to take certain shots and 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 doesn't know when to pass or where to pass and how he should do this or that. And those hesitations would lead to a botcher, a steal, and an early goal from the madman. And he would score pretty easily, and Bachira would tell Rayo that it's really, really unbecoming of him. He should, he should just be having fun. Why is he worrying so much? Rayo would look around, looking at Nagi and also Chiguri, who are having their own battles. But it seems like Nagi is putting himself in better positions than Chiguri currently is, going against someone that is reacting to every movement he ever does. Yes, he can try to outrun him, but... It seems that Isagi has everything, everything predicted. That 1-0 would turn on its head relatively quick. Rayo would try to force a pass down to Nagi, and this pass would be huge. It would be a great pass, don't get me wrong, and Nagi would go up and control it like an insane person. He would control it in a way that nobody would even expect, but Kunigami would be all over it. He might be able to control the ball, but they're too far for him to score the ball. So he knows that as long as he uses his body type and his ability to, to defend in this regard, once he gets past or once he's able to steal the ball from Nagi, everything else goes out the window. Once Nagi gets to the ground, he tries to control it and more or less maneuver around Kunigami, trying to do some spectacular movement, kicking the ball around Kunigami, allowing him to get it to his other foot. But as he does this, out of nowhere, Bachira would be right there, stealing the ball from him. Everyone is kind of shocked, but Isagi's not, not even one bit. He knew Bachira was going to do this. Yes, Bachira is unpredictable, but Isagi is able to predict him because of how long he's been around him. Bachira is being a factor, and a major one at that. And it's all because Rayo is outclassed outclassed by a mile. Nagi believes that he'll have to step his game up even further. There's no way he's going to allow it to be this easy. Now they're down 2-0. to zero. The, ball, the ball is now in Nagi's hands to start, or in by Nagi's feet, I guess, technically, and he would begin bolting off toward Kunigami. He would begin to try and maneuver and dodge, and he would realize something. This field, I mean, it's so fun. He hasn't had so much fun in his life. I mean, what is this? I mean, it's truly amazing. Nagi doesn't know how to even react to this. He doesn't know how to even think. I mean, football's always been kind of a eh thing for him. But he's in love with it now. Isagi has brought that out of him. As he thinks this, Kunigami comes to defend him. Kunigami cuts him off right at the right at the peak of where he, where he's going. But it's as if Nagi's foot, one of Nagi's feet, just reacts on its own, tapping the ball, going in between Kunigami's legs. Nagi is now moving in a way that Isagi has no idea how he's doing. But a smile would grow over Isagi's face and he would come sliding in. And as he slides in, Nagi would immediately pop the ball back up. But Isagi's foot would make contact with the ball while he's still on the ground, pushing the ball toward the ground and bouncing it back up. Isagi would spring back up as Nagi would meet him in the air. Of course, this would leave Chiguri open, but Isagi's relying on his reactions to actually block a pass if he so chooses to do so. Nagi would then try to pass, but he would begin thinking about it, and his body would begin thinking about it. 
so the pass would be intercepted by Isagi. Isagi would take it, dribbling through all of them and scoring his first goal of this match, making it 3-0. And Isagi would smile toward Nagi and Nagi would be amped up even more. What was he able to do? He can do it again. And Isagi would look toward Bachira and Bachira would quietly ask what, he, what was he able to do exactly. And Isagi explains that Nagi is able to actually utilize some sort of ultra instinct. Yes, it's not anywhere near complete, but in terms of soccer or in terms of football, in this regard, he's able to actually utilize it in dribbling. He's not sure about, well, scoring, but he obviously can't use it in terms of passing. He's not, he's just still thinking about it. But in terms of dribbling, and also recovering the ball or basically controlling it, it seems that Nagi is now learning and understanding how to utilize his body to, to do such things without even thinking. And Bachira is pretty shocked by this. He asks if Nagi can, well, do what he does, what Isagi does. And Isagi shakes his head. Not yet. At least, not yet. He believes that Nagi is a prodigy. And yes, there's a reason why he's amped up so much this throughout this time. But Nagi won't be able to use Ultra Instinct the way Isagi does. He won't be able to utilize it in passing, dribbling, controlling, defending, everything. He won't be able to. He's not... It's not that he's not, well, super skilled at it. It's that he doesn't, well, have a full grasp on it yet. Isagi was in-depth in Ultra Instinct and Instinctual Intelligence throughout a long period of time. Isagi may be a prodigy, but he's not an instant learner. He's not some fast learner that could instantly pick up everything at a glimpse. That's not how that works. But in terms of control and dribbling, it seems as if Nagi has that down packed. And Isagi would just be smiling at this. I mean, he, this is great. I mean, he's never thought anybody would even be able to do this. Bar, barring someone like Nagi, I mean, this is insane. I mean, Nagi didn't even really enjoy football. Now he's in love with it. And that's what you need to unlock this instinctual intelligence to unlock true Ultra Instinct. But as much as Nagi is making a difference, it won't matter in the long run. There's too many weak links on their team. And let's just say Rayo will need to evolve. And... He's not quite there, and not just yet. So, when Nagi tries to utilize it one, le one next time, that next time, Isagi would come barreling in, and he would steal the ball from him once again. Nagi would be frustrated. How? How is he able to do this? He doesn't understand. Isagi would smile as he passes the ball up to Kuragami as he shoots from an insane range, and he would drill it. It's now 4-0. to zero. Isagi would then tell Nagi, though, that it's truly amazing what he's done in such a short amount of time. If he gets more time, well, they could be monsters together. I know, I know that blue lock is, well, to find the one, that single best striker. But imagine, imagine two people with this instinctual love for soccer on the field at the same time, together, Striking down the field together? Isagi would smirk at this as he tells this to Nagi. And Nagi tells him that if they're not on the same team, he'll do everything in his power to beat them. He will. And as the next, well, t chance that he has is up, let's just say it still doesn't go very well for him. Isagi would guard Nagi once again, switching with Kunigami. And Nagi would continue to dribble, but at the same time, it's as if it's just a chess match now. It's really whoever has the most experience. But at the same time, Nagi and his body would realize something. He's bigger, far bigger than Isagi. He would begin to use that body, his strength, and frankly, his will to win. And he would be able to get by Isagi. Oh my god isagi would turn this guy he really is a monster 
he goes charging back toward Nagi, trying to make up for the difference, trying to stop him. And Nagi would, would more or less wind up to shoot. And he would shoot, but it would be blocked. Isagi would smile. Mm-mm-mm. Not quite. He would kick the ball toward Kunigami. As Kunigami would do a, a quick pass to Bachura, as Bachura makes a move on Chiguri, and he scores the final goal. Beating Nagi's team 5-0. to zero. Nagi's confused. Ha. Huh. How did you block it? Wait. No. That doesn't make sense. And Isagi would explain. That Nagi. In terms of ball control and dribbling. It seems as if his body was moving on its own. But he still was thinking when he was striking. At the goal. Still was thinking when he was shooting for his goal. That's one thing that he'll have to work on. And continue to work on everything dribbling and control is great but if he doesn't master every aspect of ultra instinct let's just say he won't be fully fully better than isagi and at the end of the day he won't be able to beat him isagi apologizes and says that he still has time though if anybody can pass him in the usage of Ultra Instinct, it's him. I mean, it might still take a while. Yes, he's a prodigy. Yes, he's maybe one of a kind, but he'll still need to truly understand and love soccer to such an extent that his body would then move on its own. And then there are even more levels beyond just that. Nagi would then smile and he would nod. He says that next time, they're against each other, he'll make sure to beat him. And Isagi nods his head and says he knows he will. He knows eventually Nagi will catch up. But a choice needs to be made now. Isagi has to make a choice. Chiguri, Rayo, or Nagi. And as sad as it is, this answer is pretty simple. Isagi says that he wants to pick Nagi. And he tells the other two that they can overrule him if they would like, and they could choose whoever they want. But Kunigami and Bachira say that Isagi has gotten them to this dance, so they'll back what he says. As much as they would want Chiguri back on their team, they understand. And Kunigami brings up the fact that if this guy can truly, well, match up with Isagi in the future and become someone else who has Ultra Instinct, there is no stopping them. It wouldn't even be close. And there may not be any way to stop them even now. So, the team of four is Isagi, Kunigami, Bachira, and Nagi. A Nagi that is different, far different than anyone would even expect. So, the four of them would walk through those doors, ready to take on whatever's to come. And when they do, they would begin just waiting. And then looking around, and they would see a team. One last team that they need to take on. And, gladly enough, it's Rin's team. It's Rin, it's Jupei, it's Tokomitsu. And it's a surprising one, actually. It's Raichi. This is insane. Isagi would run up to him. No way. No way, you're already here. Oh, your, your team must have lost, huh? To, to Rin's team? And, and Raichi would kind of shrug it off. Saying that, yeah, it did happen. But they saw something in me. So they added me up. So now we're here. And Raichi would smirk. That means you guys won as well. I think we should take on these guys. And Raichi would be excited at this aspect. He's been pretty high on in, or uh, pretty high on Isagi. Like he's been a pretty good, I wouldn't call him role model, but a pretty good kind of teacher in a way. He's given him a purpose, a lockdown defender, actually to the point that even he has aspects of this instinctual intelligence but just a little differently and Isagi would be excited to take them on when they would enter the field they would get the ball first 
and Isagi would immediately pass it to Nagi. As he goes to cut away and leave and, you know, look for a pass and look for an opening, he would actually be stopped by Raichi. Raichi would stand right in front of him. And Isagi would move a certain way and he would stay in front of him. Every time he moved, dip, dodge, whatever, he would be in front of him. And he would look at Raichi. No way. This is insane. A smile would grow over Isagi's face. He thinks it's time for him to level up. And it's going to be a difficult one. He continues to try and lose Raichi to the best of his ability. And also guide the match to, to his abil best of his ability as well. But the fact that he has someone that seems to have some sort of defense version and has his version of a defensive ultra instinct being that of course he has that as well but obviously Raichi doesn't have it in terms of dribbling and scoring and stuff like that it's just defense so when he tries to cut past him and tries to move around him it seems like he's reacting to everything he sees almost instantaneously but eventually Isagi would would get his opening and when he would get his opening he would feel this shadow right behind him. It's Rin. Who is this guy? He's awesome too. Isagi would, would sense him though. And he would, he would immediately tap the ball in between his legs. Rin would be shocked. He, he covered distance. He knew exactly where he was going to be. But he still made a play around him. As he taps the ball through his legs, there's one person right there waiting. Nagi. Nagi knew exactly what was going to happen, at least to an extent, and kicks the ball for their first goal. Rin would just stare at Isagi as they're walking back to the, you know, the middle of the field. Rin would be pissed. How is this guy doing this? He's one-upping him. He's beating him? No, 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 no. He's not beating him. He'll show him. He'll do it. He'll, he'll, he'll even the score. 1 to 0 at the moment Rin would immediately take a shot a shot from basically the very start from the inbound more or less and he would shoot it shooting the goal before or shooting the goal during kickoff but just as he does someone is in the air whoa it's Isagi ready for the inbound kick or the the, ki the kickoff goal and he headers it toward Nagi. Rin's shocked. How did he react to that? Does he know the field like me? Does he understand the field like me? Not necessarily. But Isagi not only has instincts in terms of his body moving on its own, but his mind can tell that Rin has a certain type of ego. This ego that's forcing him to do certain things and do certain things like that he may be good but isagi is just that much better nagi would quickly go through the entirety of the defense and score once again and his ultra instinct for dribbling and control and soon his passing would slowly but surely be developing more and more there are still flaws in his control and dribbling. Don't get me wrong. It's not perfected. So this is like his way of trying to reach perfection. But up to O, it seems as if it's already going their way. Raichi would be frustrated. I mean, he's not striking. He's defending. And frankly, he's doing a really good job. He's defending Isagi at an insane pace. And on top of that, he's kind of locking him down. He's not allowing Isagi to score at all, and he'll continue to do that, but Isagi will have to find creative ways to get around people and more or less do anything he possibly can. But eventually, the holes in their own defense will show, and that's all involved because of Rin. Rin would pass it down to Jupei as he outjumps everybody, but at the same time, Kunigami is able to more or less match him. But that's where the issue kind of lies. If Kunigami is on Jupei, well, Tokimitsu has Bachira, and Bachira is far weaker than Tokimitsu. So when that is exposed, it leads to a Tokimitsu goal. 
leading to a 2-1 in favor of Isagi's team still. But even with this said and done, Bachira would eventually get his, well, his get back. And he would just be completely unpredictable with his dribbles and, and everything you could see cutting by the defense, cutting through, and Isagi would just smile as he watches Bachira just enjoy himself. Yes, he just enjoying himself. Bachira may not have Ultra Instinct like the degree they do, and the former monster he had within him may be the reason for that, and just have those, and he has those limiters on himself, but at the same time, does he even need it? I mean, look at him go. He's insane. He might... He might actually basically have it have a perfected, well, dribbling Ultra Instinct. You never know. That's what it feels like, at least. But it's different somehow. It's far different. With Ultra Instinct, you want to avoid having an ego, at least to an extent. But it's as if Bachira has an ego. He has this underlying ego within him that's allowing him to dribble and have even more fun than you could imagine. He would score and their lead would increase 3 to 1. But that lead, all it would do is expand. Raichi would try his best to defend, but he can't defend everybody. And eventually, Isagi would get loose. With some creative play style, he would be able to get switched on to Rin, and Isagi's matchup is just too easy for him. In defending everybody else, he begins to pick up on little things. The height difference and the jump difference with Jupe would slowly but surely fade away, and the muscle of Tokamitsu would slowly but surely not matter much, and Isagi would be taking over the game. He would eventually score his own goal directly on Rin, easily getting by him, and Rin would be freaking out, unsure of even himself, not knowing what's happening. How is he able to do these things? How? It just doesn't make any sense. How is he able to do all the things he's doing? It's as if his body is just moving on its own. Jesus Christ. His body is moving on its own. Isagi would smile toward Rin. It's four to one. And Isagi still being the nice person he always is. He knows how talented Rin is. He knows how good he truly is. It's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate that he had to go up against this team. This team is a well-oiled machine. It's not something that would have been defeated easily. Isagi would soon get the final goal, and they would win 5-1 to one against Rin's team. Yes, 5-1. to one. And there's a choice that needs to be made. A big choice. Does Isagi choose Rin? Someone that could see the field beautifully and maybe even grow alongside, well, someone with mastered Ultra Instinct and someone that is progressing in the, in the instinctual intelligence of football. Or does he pick Raichi, someone who has this defensive, uh, imperfected Ultra Instinct that even almost shut down Isagi to a certain extent. This is a hard choice. Isagi's not sure. He's scratching his head. Hmm. What do you guys think? He asked Nagi and Bachira and Kunigami. And they look toward Rin. They point at him, saying that that is Sai Itoshi's little brother. And Isagi would look back at them. Whoa, really? Who's that? Everybody would slap their heads. You really don't know who Sai Toshi is? Uh, should I? And Nagi would say the same thing, saying he doesn't know either. And that wouldn't be that surprising to be fair, but Isagi is very surprising. Isagi says he loves football, loves it. He's obsessed with it. But I mean, he's obsessed with playing it. I mean, he never even really watches that much TV. Kind of, doesn't it like rot the brain? And everybody's just standing there in complete shock. What do you mean it rots the... Never mind. They would explain that Rin has a special talent. And Isagi waves him off. Yeah, I mean, he knows that. I mean, that's pretty obvious. And they say that he would be insanely good for their team. 
especially for whatever is to come. And those are massive question marks. They have no idea what's truly coming. And Isagi would think about this. Hmm. Maybe you're right. And maybe he could even get better with us as a team. And Rin would say that he doesn't need them to get better. To just don't even choose them. That he'll, he'll find his way back. He could easily find his way back. And Rin would just be pissed. But Isagi would look at him. Just for that, Rin. Mr. Rin. I'm going to choose you. Everyone begins to laugh because they know that Isagi's doing it on purpose. But he also would walk over toward Rin. Saying that them two, they're very different. Rin sees the field far differently than Isagi does. He just does. And that this will be the benefit for all of them. He says that if he wants to beat other people, these other football players that are soon to come, if he wants to beat Saitoshi, then he might want to play a little bit nice, at least for now. Because sometimes you have to devour others to truly, truly get better. And he would be shocked to hear this from Isagi. I mean, I mean, that sounds so egotistical, right? And Isagi would shrug it off. Eh, not really. And he would just walk away. And Rin would follow up and just follow them. And now their team is built up of Rin, Isagi, Bachira, Nagi, and Kunigami. An all-star team. But how much would that all-star team really do when, well, he's taking on something a little bit different and that little bit different well is the world five yes this is the next stop the world five and this would be something that Rin is interested in heavily even walking up to them saying that he's he more or less doesn't like the idea that they're thinking that this is some sightseeing trip that they're not taking it seriously. And Isagi would hear this and begin to walk over. He would listen to them and they would all ask what he's even doing. But he wouldn't even respond as eventually they would respond to, well, Rin. And they would tell Rin that they're just here because they got a, a large sum of money. They don't really care about being here at all. I mean, come on now. And one of them even says that he's really just here for the sightseeing trips and some Japanese women. That's about it. And Isagi would, would hear this and his smile would drop. It would be gone. No longer there. And he would look at them. And Rin would say something very similar to something that, well, Isagi wanted to say. He says that this sightseeing trip may become traumatic and is going to come traumatic. And Isagi looks at them and says that if they're really here just for a chump a chunk of change not for the love of soccer and not to enjoy their match well then he's going to make all of them suffer and they're they're completely shocked they're not taking him seriously initially but then they look at him and it's as if they can feel this aura around him and he saw you would turn around and walk away it's as if they just unleashed a monster within Isagi. Isagi would be dead-faced, serious. Rin would catch up and would look at him oddly. What is wrong with this kid? He was so go-lucky, happy, and all that two seconds ago. And Bachira would look over and he would see Isagi and ask Rin, what the hell did they say? And Rin explains and Bachira stops him about 25% through explaining. And Bachira says that this, this match might be a little bit closer than you possibly would imagine. Rin, still under the belief that they're going to win, he, he says good. If it makes the kid better, then that's all that matters. And Batra says that it's, well, more than just that. But you'll see pretty soon. And Batra, when the, when the match would start, would get a pass from Isagi just immediately off. Batra would look at him and Isagi would stare at him but then Isagi would nod his head toward as if telling him to go forward. And that's what he would do. 
Batra would show off his dribbling skills just like he did normally, and he would get his, the first goal. And it would be amazing. But then, then it would all crumble. Or at least, that's what the World 5 thought would happen. When someone, one of the World 5, would come barreling forward at insane speeds, let's just say he's super dynamic, well, yeah, they thought they would make it easily by everybody. And this man is named Adam Blake. Someone that Isagi is not too fond over at this moment. He would go barreling forward and easily get by a couple of them. Get by Nagi, get by Rin. But just as he's walking up to Isagi, it's as if everything around him goes black. There are no pathways out of here. Isagi would steal the ball and everybody, well, behind him would be kind of shocked. How the hell did that kid do that? They were just messing around and... What? How did he... He steals the ball and quickly he would begin to just cut through their defense entirely. They're too stunned to even react really. But eventually, Silva would come barreling through this big Brazilian. But even he can't stop him. He tries to foul him, but... Isagi would move in a certain way that he's so slippery that he gets by. He shoots the goal, and it's another score. They're up 2-0, to zero, and it's a game to 5. And, well, the World 5 would realize something. That that kid, he's something serious. That maybe they should amp it up a little bit. And that amp it up, the amp, the amp up would immediately happen with the France representative. He would go blitzing through at insane speeds, faster than really anyone could react to. But Isagi would be right there, reacting to it. It's insane that he's even able to keep up, but once the World 5 starts to coordinate, it doesn't matter anymore. Isagi, he did his thing, but they had a realization that if they, have, if they play one-on-one -on -one ball, I mean, this kid might become a problem. And he's not even, well, at his peak yet. But eventually, goals would come. And even with a struggle of Isagi, Asagi more or less scoring one more goal, it would still end 5-3. to three. But one person's watching Ego. And all he can think about is the idea that Isagi is on the level, or maybe on the level, of these, of these World 5. The World 5 players. But, of course, that's not exactly how you could scale it. It's, it's hard to scale it. This is a 5-on-5. Five five. They're, let's be honest, not coordinated to with each other. They're just all individually talented. So what happens when you get people out there that are extremely good, but they are coordinated? It might be a different story. Especially with someone trying to go 1 versus 5. It's basically impossible. Just like how you've seen here. But still... Impressive is an understatement, and Isagi has shown and proven his worth. Rin, on the other hand, is at a loss for words. He doesn't know what to do, especially after they all started coordinated or coordinating. It literally felt useless. Rin couldn't do a single thing, and when they all leave and are all wrapped up, and it's all wrapped up, the World Five compliments Isagi, but then they would take their leave as well. Because at the end of the day, they were there to get paid. And frankly, it seems as if they brought something out of Isagi that they weren't expecting at that moment. But still, the team of, or Isagi's team, would leave and be prepared and get ready for whatever's to come next. And they would eventually learn what's to come. And what's to come is something truly amazing. What's to come is is something that Isagi is looking forward to. A match. A match between the Japan's U20 team. Now that is something Isagi can really get behind. He tells Nagi that if he wants to evolve, well, this would be the way to do it. This is where all of them evolve. Isagi says this is where Nagi 
turns on and more or less transfers into the domain of Ultra Instinct. This is where Bachira levels up his dribbling to something beyond anybody's comprehension. And this is where Rin can prove himself. Kunigami would step in. Hey, you're forgetting about me. And Isagi would laugh and chuckle, saying that of course he didn't forget about him. This is where Kunigami becomes a superhero. The superhero of football. Everybody would be locked in and they would watch as everyone else who has passed the second selection walk in as well. They're excited for the U20 match and they're all, they all heard what's going on. They all know what's to come. Now, what's to come for Isagi in the future? Well, that's for another story and another time. 